Oh my gosh. Hello. Hi, it's me, Glittergal. Happy New Year. 2020 is finally behind us. A new year is ahead of us and a brand new season of RuPaul's Drag Race. Eh, hello. Let's talk about it. If you haven't quite figured it out yet from the name of this channel or from the intro that you just watched, my name is Glittergal. I am a drag queen local to Kansas City and I've been the biggest fan of RuPaul's Drag Race ever since it first premiered on Logo back in 2009, which means I'm really old. But also that I've watched this show for a very long time. And I remember seeing Angina walk into the workroom for the very first time and thinking, dang, this show is revolutionary. And now here we are 13 seasons later, and I actually know people who've been on the show. It's crazy. It means so much to so many people. And I have always wanted to do a review show about it. So I guess it finally took a pandemic for me to do that. Uh, but anyway, here I am, and every week I hope that we can share opinions about the show, about the episode, I hope we can have conversations in the comments, polite conversations, and um, oh yeah, every week I plan on doing some sort of like trivia, I have lots of RuPaul's Drag Race merch, and uh, I've got lots of extra merch to give away, so uh, stick around, this should be fun. I will say, before we get started, spoilers ahead. So if you haven't watched this week's episode, go back and watch it, and then come back and see this. Grab your rosé. Hey. And uh, let's get to talking. So first of all, episode one, season 13, and we've got a new format. Six-way lip sync. We're going up in pairs. We're two at a time walking in the workroom. That's a little different. Never done that before, so I guess... Here's to keeping it fresh. And you know, they filmed this during the middle of the pandemic, so it was kind of interesting to see the judges panel with the plexiglass in between each judge. Um, at first I was just like, oh, they're really spread apart. And then of course Ross grabbed that little squeegee thing and I was like, oh, there's plexiglass in between them. Just kind of weird considering like, how are they gonna do this the rest of the season? Like when RuPaul walks around the workroom, I would imagine they're all getting tested daily. I bet the plexiglass is more for like the safety of the guest judges. But also this was the first time we've had, will they have guest judges? Like, I don't know. This is the first time we've had um, a season premiere on VH1 without a guest special guest judge. Like since they premiered on VH1, we've had Lady Gaga, Miley Cyrus, Nicki Minaj, and now here we are just the four main judges. So I guess that'll be interesting to see how they're going to play that one. Uh, it's just probably going to be a very interesting season. I mean, episode one already kind of was. So the first two contestants to walk into the workroom were Candy Muse and Joey J. And I don't know if you're anything like me, but I've been waiting for Candy Muse to get on the show ever since she was in those music videos with Aja a couple years ago. Uh, and Aja jumped into the video game screen in one of the videos, and Candy's voice was like, Aja! Bitch! Aja! I, it's rent-free in my head, I swear to gosh. Anyway, uh, Candy was wearing this super cute denim ensemble with the denim boom box. Adorable. And uh, Joey J looked good in the red chicken feather jacket thing. Anyway, there were chicken feathers going everywhere. Uh, they lip synced to Carly Rae Jepsen's Call Me Maybe, and I think I agree with the judges, you know, with the little fake death drop thing and how emotive Candy's face was throughout the whole thing. It was just super cute, and I like the press play of the fake boombox and the stop of the fake boombox at the end. It was cute. It was a cute little lip sync, so I agree with it, but like the pork chop lounge. Could you imagine being there? The very first two people to walk in, very first one, and you go get sequestered in like this pork chop lounge with all the first eliminated people on the wall. Like, 
your heart's got to sink. You didn't even get to do anything. Like, there wasn't even a mini challenge. Like, it was nothing. Like, obviously, we're in a pandemic and things are different, but what the heck is going on? So, the next two to walk into the workroom were Denali and La La Ree. And uh, they're both wearing all white. Super cute. And La La Ree's got the body yaddy yaddy with the little jacket thing. And uh, Denali, of course, looks like a figure skater. Um... My mom watched the episode with me and kept saying, how come she doesn't have, like, the skate covers? Was she cutting up the floor as she was walking? Wearing ice skates to lip sync had to be hard. Um, what song did they do? Uh, when I Grow Up. Um, that was cute. The only reason I think that maybe Denali did not win is because the costume kept, like, it wasn't, made for lip syncing so like you could see nipples like Lala Ree just looked more put together during the lip sync and probably like what were those ice skates doing to the main stage Blah. so contestant number five and six is Simone in the uh, Polaroid picture dress with ugh, legs for days like first of all can we talk about Simone's beautiful highlight and this like golden kissed skin like she gorgeous like I feel like Simone was a fan favorite before the show premiered uh when they did the cast announcement uh and the whole meet the queens thing I think everybody was like gagging over Simone and that cool hair it, it's like different but also like very I don't know. It's just, it's really cool. Um, and I'm, I'm really excited to see Simone go pretty far. Like I think most of us are hoping. And she was with contestant number six, uh, Tamisha Iman, who, um, obviously very classic drag, like, um, uh, been doing drag for a really long time. She said 30 years, but I think I saw somewhere that she's in her forties. So has she been doing drag since she was, a kid maybe I don't know we all live our lives but yeah that cancer story man hook that that hit kind of hard um I'm glad that she is okay and okay enough to be on Drag Race season 13 like you know I think sometimes it's just having hope that keeps us together um but man she could have been on season 12 could have met Widow anyway um I digress uh, they sang some Janet Jackson song that I can't remember the title to. I feel like they both did really well, but it was Simone's face. Like, she was just, like, I feel like it was a joy to watch her on the screen. I always think that, like, it's got to be different in person. Like, we don't get but clips, you know, when we're watching on TV, we get little clips of them, uh, what they show us. So we don't really get to see the ins and outs of their lip sync. Like, did they miss words or whatever? We don't see it all. Um, so I imagine what the judges see is very different. Um, but just the facial expressions that we were getting out of Simone, I thought were just ah, adorable poster child. Beautiful. Loved it. Loved it. Next contestant to this stage is Got Mick, and I think Got Mick has been the other fan favorite since they made the cast announcement, and uh, Utica uh, was the other one. So Got Mick, celebrity makeup artist. Uh, I've, ugh, I've been following Got Mick forever. I'm so excited for this queen. Um, I don't know, art. Is this like not just like the makeup, but like the costuming and everything about Got Mick is just art. Um I don't wanna like be super biased, but like in my personal opinion, right now, I'm really hoping Got Mick wins. But of course it's only episode one and we don't really know what's going on yet. So we got a lot of time to make opinions on who's going to be the winners and all that. But, but Utica, uh, so Utica is a queen that I had no idea who they were before this. And what a crazy artist. I love the personality. I love how happy Utica seems. Um, I'm really excited to see what 
she brings to the show. Um, they sang or they lip synced to Rumors by Lindsay Lohan. And I agree with the winner choice, although I felt like it was really close. I think the only thing that set them apart was Utica's hair getting in her face. Like if it weren't for that little tuft of hair, I think that uh, it would have been a really close call. But I think it's the little things sometimes when they all look so polished and put together, the judges got to get nitpicky. And, um, you know, they didn't know they were going to be lip syncing right away, though. These were supposed to be their entrance looks. Like, here's your entrance looks, and you're going right to the main stage. I guess I'd rather go to the main stage and lip sync for my life than back in, like, season five when they had to wear their entrance looks into a dunk tank. Could you imagine, like, you're wearing your best drag, meeting all the new queens for the first time, and you got to go underwater? I probably would have pulled in Alaska and also been like, uh, no, not doing this. I can't do it. I fail. The downside is they all thought they were getting eliminated. So I guess water versus getting eliminated. I'd take the water. So the next two queens to enter the workroom were Olivia Lux in this super adorable yellow, pink, half and half number, which, cute. Um, and also, does Olivia not have the cutest smile? Like, I thought that when she was on Meet the Queens today, like, the whole lip sync, I was like, oh my gosh, she is the most adorable person ever. Most adorable person ever. Um, anyway, and then, of course, Rosé, who, Rosé in this hot pink jacket number, um, obviously very clever, very clever jokes, uh, loved the look walking into the workroom more so than I did the Meet the Queens video. And I also think that I am going to turn rosé into a drinking game. Like every Friday, get yourself a bottle of rosé, sit down and watch the episode, and anytime rosé shows up on the screen, take a drink. That's what I'm going to do. They know each other. The only two competitors that knew each other ahead of time, both from New York, and could you imagine the gag? Their lip sync song was X's and O's. I thought they both did a great job. Um, I honestly kind of thought Rosé was going to win just by what we saw on TV. But, of course, Olivia has that very emotive face. So, I don't know. They were both doing the dang thing. That one could have been a tie to me. But uh, could you imagine how gagged Rosé was when Olivia pulled that win? And Rosé was also the only one who walked away from the stage and had the exit greeting that I probably would have said in this situation. It's like everybody else kind of said like they're like probably pre-planned exit lines. Like, you know, when you go into Drag Race, you probably have like, this is what I'm going to say when I walk into the workroom, and this is what I'm going to say if I get eliminated. And then you only can hope that you remember it when those moments come. But... This situation is so weird that Rosé was just like, uh, bye, I guess? Because that's probably how they all really felt. And then to round off your season, the final three queens to walk in are Tina Burner, looking like a sexy fireman burner. Like, I'm kind of getting the theme here. Like, uh, Elliot with two Ts, who is in like a pants 80s number dancer. Um, but then we had Kamora Hall. Kamora with a K-A, not a K-I. Get it right. Uh, from Chicago. And Kamora is like your very classic queen. Like, also a big, beautiful smile. Um, very pageanty, And of course, wearing Bob Mackie. Uh, she looked she looked beautiful. She was stunning. You know, very classic type drag. I thought they all did pretty okay. Um, I was expecting a little more dance moves, but again, I feel like when you don't really know what's going on, do you want to drop all your moves right away? Uh, so Tina Burner was the winner and the other two sashayed to the Pork Chop Lounge. And I would probably agree with that. I feel like we didn't see enough to know who really was the standout of those three, but seems right that it was Tina. 
So anyway, then they all are now split up and sequestered. You've got your losers over here and you've got your winners over here. So in your losers lounge or the pork chop lounge or the pork chop, whatever you want to call it, um, they're all walking into this room thinking that they got eliminated and instead they're meeting other queens. Like the only one who really thought this was it was probably Joey J for being the first one there. Like Denali walks in and sees Joey J and is all like, oh, something's going on. Then Tamisha Iman walks in and is like, oh, something's going on. But Tamisha was very pessimistic and like, nope, this is it. This is over. She said, we're going home. We're going home. Like, there was no convincing her otherwise. She was just like, okay, this is it. Throw in the towel. Like, we're done here. And I think every other queen, though, when they saw the other queens, was like, okay, something's going on. This isn't the end of the road. What is this weird twist? Like, we all should have expected some sort of twist. Episode one, what's happening? Uh and then, of course, RuPaul makes that announcement where she's like, get in the van. And everyone's like, okay, well, I guess that was it. Of course, they all kind of feel that sense of defeat, which I couldn't imagine. That probably felt so terrible. Like, they didn't even get to unpack their suitcase. They didn't even get to show any looks. They didn't get to do any mini challenges. They didn't get to do anything. They're just like, all right, time to go home. And, you know, so they're all probably feeling defeated. But, of course, Denali is the one who says that classic sentence that's like oh this is all i've ever wanted like girl you're not the only one in this room they've all wanted this like we get it i i understand you gotta cry it out well, then michelle does the little bit where she's like really you just sent home half of your cast and Rue's like oh okay my bad uh new announcement you have to pick one person to vote off a twist like how do you decide they all just met each other like they don't I wouldn't even know who would you vote for how how would you even determine who you're gonna vote for I really can't decide which one out of all of those is the one that's gonna go home first but uh, I guess we'll find out next episode Ugh, cliffhanger is this the first time we've seen a to be continued on a RuPaul's Drag Race then of course in your winner's room. They're just in the workroom having a good old time. Um, classic untucked getting to know each other. They're talking about what just happened and you know they get to de-drag. It's kind of like back to separating them. And do you think for the rest of the season that they're gonna have a split like this group was the first one that lost and this group was the first one to win. But open discussion if you haven't seen those prediction videos either. Who's going home first? Because I sure as heck could not tell. And uh, how's this dynamic going to play? There is so much. I liked this format. I did. Like, honestly, as far as Drag Race season openers, I thought this one was pretty cool. I, I like the classic mini challenge and main challenge thing. I liked the split openings like they did in season 12 and in season 6. Um, I liked the fashion show like they did in season 7 and season 12. But uh, I don't know. I kind of liked this like this one was different because we've never seen it before. And every pair of queens that came out was like a different thrill. Like how is this going to work? What are they doing? So I do think that this was an interesting take. Whoever whoever thought of this one on the board of ideas or whatever, good job. Because it definitely kept me on my toes. Um, what do you think? Okay, so there she was, episode one. Um, I hope you enjoyed my ramblings on about this episode. And of course, I'd love to discuss more in the comments. Uh, so yeah, let's discuss. If you enjoyed the video or you would like to see more, um, I will be posting these every Saturday, unless something happens and it's gonna be Sunday, but it'll be the weekend following Drag Race um, on Fridays. So, um, you know, definitely 
like, comment, subscribe, click that notification bell, um, you know, all that fun stuff. And then this week's trivia question. So what I'm going to do every week is I'm going to ask a trivia question and then I'm going to pick from the people in the comments by a random shuffler thing. Uh, basically the people with the right answers and whoever has gets picked with the right answer will win this prize, which this week is going to be a mask from a world of wonder, uh, that is, you know, RuPaul's Drag Race. So, um, We've got the Corona, she better don't. Hello, clever. If you'd like to win that, my trivia question is, in the history of RuPaul's Drag Race, there has only ever been one six-way lip sync for your life. Name all of those queens that were in that lip sync and who went home. Anyway, get that trivia question right and I will be sending you a message uh, to get you your prize. Uh, anyway, I hope that I see you again next week when we see who went home and what to expect out of our next episode. Um, yeah, welcome back. Happy New Year and uh, new season of RuPaul's Drag Race. Life doesn't get any better than this, does it? Peace out. Love you lots. <laughs>